So, uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Pierre-Louis jean, -Jean uh, Technical Marketing Engineer at Illumio. Um, <clears throat> so, let me actually introduce the uh, myth number three, which is all about vulnerability management. Okay. So, for this myth, and, and let me tell you about the myth. Okay, but before, sorry, before we dive into the myth, uh, just to refocus on the architecture. Um, you know now that we have our agent, we have the PC with all the context and telemetry going from the vents to the PC, and we have instructions coming from the PC to change policies on the workloads, okay? CMDB integration, natural language for policy, and we showed you at the very beginning of session that now you can complement the information that you get on the map using vulnerability scanner partners. So we have here uh, some three major partners, but it can be definitely any other partner that you might come up with. And we have this vulnerability map. So let's jump into the myth. So the myth is very simple, okay? Security segmentation, vulnerability management, nothing to do together, okay? If I think about it, and, and when we're meeting with our customers, and the way they describe it, it it's pretty simple, okay? The vulnerability management people are telling us, you know what, I have all the tools that I need to identify my vulnerabilities. I'm fine with what I have, okay? And, and what we hear as well is that, you know what, I only need to take care about my high and critical vulnerabilities because that's really what matters, okay? And the last thing that we hear, which is probably uh, uh, one of the most interesting thing, okay, if I don't have a patch and you have to patch, okay, um, I will probably quarantine my workloads if they're way too vulnerable, okay. Um, which might be true or not true, but we hear that, okay, I'm gonna quarantine those workloads if I don't have a patch. So again, let's see one by one what we can do and what we can offer with the Lumio, see if we can confirm or bust the myth, okay? So, <clears throat> let me give you an example within the TME company, so-called famous TME company. We have one guy responsible for vulnerability management. It's Jason, okay? And our Jason today is our vulnerability guy, and he's a very pragmatic guy. He's using a scan report, or he's actually sending a list of IPs and hosts to uh, our vulnerability scan uh, partner, okay? Here's what he's getting in return. A list of IP addresses, protocol, ports, this is what we get. You might have a fancier like HTTP based um, uh, report, but in the end, if you wanna explore really long entries, this is what you're gonna get. Vulnerabilities, CVSS score, and CVs, if they exist. So, that's pretty cool. And actually, it identify all the vulnerabilities on the, on the workloads. That's completely true, okay? But the problem is that I don't have any context about any application. I don't have any context about the exposure of that vulnerability, right? I have a vulnerability that's bad. I need to patch again. But the point is, maybe I don't know that this vulnerability is on a port that is not really used by anything or it's not that exposed, right? So Jason, very pragmatic, okay? I have to deal with those millions of vulnerabilities in my environment. Um, I'm gonna filter on high and critical. And I'm gonna reach out to the guys who are application owners. Hey, this IP, you have that vulnerability. Go and fix it, please, okay? So what Jason is doing, again, very pragmatic. He's sending an email Friday night before going on weekend. Here is your application. You have a bunch of vulnerabilities you have to patch right now, okay? Uh, that's why we call him the Supreme Delegator because like he's that. getting this IP, the list of <laughs> IP, passing the ball. So now we can rest, go on weekend, have some beers, have some fun, while the application owner received that email and says, ooh, I gotta check that because I don't feel super good about this. Okay, so Harish now is our application owner and he received that email from Jason saying, you gotta patch this now, man. So he's going, what he's gonna do, Harish, he's gonna use Illumio to actually visualize those vulnerabilities in the context of his application. Because again, that scan report gives you list of IPs, vulnerability scores, but that doesn't give you anything about how is it exposed or how is it in my application. So he's gonna drill down into, he's responsible for the code repository, so it's a GitLab application running, and he's gonna check that GitLab application in Illumination Map, okay? And actually to leverage the capability of our Illumination Map and the scan report, 
he's going to inject that scan report into the PC. Okay? The PC is going to ingest that vulnerability scan report, and we're going to show what we call the vulnerability map. Okay? Vulnerability map is basically, is that big enough for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes? So vulnerability map, <laughs> you want to make it bigger? Yes. Trouble. Can you make it bigger? Sure. Plus. Okay. So the vulnerability map is actually oh, glasses, a, the best way to visualize your uh, vulnerabilities in your environment. Okay. So that gives you actually colors. So dark red, of course, means you're in trouble. Green is everything is green. Okay. What he's gonna do, and he doesn't feel any better looking at this, right? So he's gonna use Illumio to actually go over the map and check what we have, what kind of data do I have. Okay, I have different scores, and I'm sorry, I can't make it bigger, so uh, for that part, you, you're gonna have to trust me, okay? Okay, I can see that. We have two scores. <laughs> One is vulnerability score. We don't reinvent the wheel, we just use CVSS, and we add the CVSS scores of the different vulnerabilities associated to your workload. What you don't have, I come back to your question in yeah. a second. Um, we have the exposure score. The exposure score is how many paths do I have to exploit those vulnerabilities, okay? So then, once we get that, okay, I can see by my database, I have like 30 paths to exploit my vulnerabilities. If I'm checking my web tier now, and that's what Harish what's gonna do, he's gonna check the web tier now, which is only showing orange color, which is technically medium, but the point is, if I'm checking this, I have an exposure score of 300 plus. That means that I have more than 300 ways to exploit those vulnerabilities. Whether it's medium, right? And we all know now that medium vulnerabilities are more and more weaponized. And so the beauty of that tool, actually, it helps you to first visualize your vulnerabilities in the context of your application. Second, it helps you to drive your patching priorities based on your exposure of those vulnerabilities. Okay? So, and I know that I'm running out of time, so I'm, I'm gonna ask you to bear with me. I'm gonna walk you through how with security segmentation, we can mitigate those vulnerabilities. So, based on that application, he's gonna use what we call the policy generator that we just show in the, in the first section. And instead of using um, the role or uh, the app group level or the rule level, he's gonna use the auto level, which is more tied to vulnerability. What you're gonna see, and that's what is really important in this case, if, I, if we slide here, to say, okay, I want to mitigate from low to medium or medium or high or critical vulnerabilities, you're gonna see that those numbers he here changing. Reduced mean, by policy, I restricted communication to a vulnerable port. Eliminated means I cut the communication, the vulnerability still exists, but I eliminated that vulnerability because it's not exposed anymore at all. Okay, in the context of this application. So, once we're fine with that policy, we're gonna <coughs> actually validate that policy. Go all the way, yes, next. And before validating, of course, we give you an overview or summary of what we did. And here, in that specific context, we have mitigated by just using the auto level set to low because I want to mitigate as much as I can. We mitigated 40 vulnerabilities, okay? We can see that the scores are going really down from, for example, 100 plus to six. And if we're provisioning the policy, we're gonna see that the map for that specific application is showing a completely different phase, completely different picture. Again, we didn't patch, you have to patch, so that's not what we're saying. It's not because you're using security segmentation that you shouldn't patch. We're just offering a compensating mechanism because you have vulnerabilities running on your workloads and we know that you cannot patch because there are some times that you cannot patch. Security segmentation will help you drive your priorities and really uh, reduce the attack surface and the risk associated to your vulnerabilities. Do you have auto-reporting of everything that you've done here and what is left to do? So for example, if I did that auto-mitigation, I want to get a report that here's what I mitigated, but the vulnerabilities still exist in these systems. So, so for example, some of it's like struts vulnerability was actually not in the, it was in the, well, it's still on port 443 and you would still allow port 443. Yep. It's like, well, we can't mitigate this, but we've limited who accesses it. 
Yes. So, so we've limited that, but you still need to patch it. Here's your priorities. Yep. Give I'll, me I'll my listing. It, it is shown actually in the, in the provisioning rules. It'll actually include the vulnerabilities that were addressed by each rule, because obviously we're not patching uh, those. We're just trying to find a compensating control. And we show you the before and after exposure scores of those vulnerabilities, so along with the provisioning think, report. What I'm thinking about is that during a lot of these types of things is always just a war room of, okay, I've done this, now let me report on, I've done this, let me report on, I want to continue to see that report on an hourly basis, what did you do, How may, what is the priority systems in order to patch is usually a big, tough question to get answered. You guys have just answered it. So it would be nice to say, okay, we've done this, here's your order of patching, now I have to go through and see what's patched. So what, what customers have used this for, to your point, is look at all my workloads. This is on my production databases. What are the most exposed vulnerabilities? So you can sort of do the, um, um, the uh, Illumio uh, score on it shows not just the vulnerabilities, but the exposure on it. The reason why we did the exposure coupled with the CVSS is, is prioritization. Let's imagine you had something with a C, like a total score of eight, but it was only one upstream system that was able to connect to it, um, and that system was completely patched. That provides a different context to something with a, a bunch of media exposed 15,000 of their hosts, right? So you can sort of look at the exposure coupled with the CVSSs to rethink your patching. So you can actually do the export out of our solution to help you do that prioritization. But we also show if you've done a compensated control using uh, segmentation, if you've actually gone that far. Well, I guess I don't want an export, I want a report that I can send to management on a regular, ongoing basis because this is high priority stuff. Yeah, you can, you can, you can report the workloads and their exposures, et cetera. But the, the thing that we've had to sort of uh, work within is the vulnerability management team wants this view and they want to get that information out and put this into their vulnerability management life cycle. So we, we believe that we have to fit within that uh, life cycle, which is uh, each practice tends to be a little bit different. So yes, you can do, get a report of the workloads, what the vulnerabilities are, what the exposures are, and prioritize that way. I'm getting the uh, mic pulled. <laughs> so we can stay afterwards and answer all the questions you want, but I know that we're, it's, our time Am is I up. Am I to ask a question? No. Can ask your question in 45 seconds? Yes, I cannot do that, but I'm going to try. Um, in the vulnerability score, exposure score, etc., beautiful. Um, I love the idea of the exposure score. Um, but do you have anything that I can add as a consideration for things like the data on this system is highly sensitive, has much larger considerations with different uh, regulations and so i want to have, be able to do a custom score so the um well yeah, customers uh, customers always rescore the vulnerabilities and then that gets input it into the pce that's number one number two is you can look at the label sets like stuff in the swift environment tends to drive a higher priority than stuff in the beverage tracking environment so the, the tags also provide a certain amount of priority okay. so people will put like swift data confidentially high as one way to do this oh, okay i'll shut up now Okay. So, right, yeah, right before the gong rings, um, <laughs> just wanted to emphasize that, okay, we had those three points. Yes, it's true that I have all that I need to identify my vulnerabilities. That's true. But still, you don't have context about the application, context about the exposure. Um, get the last one. Sorry? The last one. And the last one, if I can't patch, I'm going to quarantine. No, you can use micro segmentation to reduce the risk, reduce the attack surface. You still have to patch. But still, you, do, you, you don't have to quarantine necessarily a workload because it's been compromised or because it has a vulnerability on it. So as far as I, we are concerned, for that specific myth, it's completely busted once again. There it goes. <laughs> Thank you.